Hello, hello, hello. This is Kara Carter, and welcome to Leslie at Large with Leslie Lawrence in Nicaragua. Leslie always takes us to fascinating places <laughs> that she is visiting and that we should be. So, Leslie, how are things in Nicaragua? <laughs> They're fabulous. How are you doing? I am well. I am well. It's uh, hot and muggy and rainy here. Much nicer where you are. It is beautiful here. I will say we have sunshine today. We had some storms come through, so we've had quite a bit of rain. It is what we consider the rainy season here, but it's beautiful today, so I'm enjoying it while I can. You know, you want to hear something fascinating. I know this is not about Nicaragua or even where I am, but over the weekend, my, my, my wife and I were jogging along the towpath in a little town in Maryland called Williamsport, right? Mm -hmm. so speaking of rain. And they have the old Cushwall factory, brick factory there. And on the side of it, now, wait till you hear this. It's on the Potomac River, right? There was a mark up on the wall of this building that was at least 40 feet up. And it was the high level watermark from a flood in 1936. Now, this thing is three football fields from the, from the Potomac River. Wow. Uh, it, it, that's unfathomable, isn't it? That is unbelievable. Absolutely. <laughs> Whoa. So I figure the whole damn town must have been on the water. <laughs> exactly. Yeah, that's hard to even imagine. <laughs> but you don't get that kind of rain in Nicaragua. Well, no. I haven't seen that kind of rain yet. <laughs> I do know there's some areas that flood and, you know, but luckily here we have not experienced that. <laughs> Fantastic. All right. Today, I think you are going to take us to the beautiful city of Leon. Now, here's my map. A lot of people say to me, Carter, you need to show us where these places are. Folks, there is blue, like her dress, Nicaragua. So where would Leon be here? on this yeah, little so, map. Yeah, go over near the coast back, no, the other side on the Pacific okay. side. Okay, there you go. Now you're about right, maybe down just a little bit. It's only like 11 miles inward from the coast. And okay. so Grand, yeah, Grand Pacifica sits over there on the Pacific coast, kind of in the middle. Okay. And Leon is just a little north of it. It's about an hour drive from Grand Pacifica. Um, like okay. I said, it's about 11 miles inward from the coast. There's a little beach town there called, I think it's called Las Benitas. Okay, folks, right there, right That's there. That's exactly right. And from Managua, yes. which is the, where you fly into, it's about, I think, around 56 miles, maybe, something like that. Okay. So it's really okay. close. Yeah. Good. It's a great day trip. It's important for us to show them because you'd be stunned how many times when I tell people, well, my wife is from Honduras, people say, is that in Africa? <laughs> yeah. I've had funny ones like that too. When I moved to Belize for the first time, when I moved out, you know, out of the country, um, one of my friends, when I said, Oh, I'm going to move to Belize, he goes, Is that in Oklahoma? And I looked at him, I'm like, De Definitely not in Oklahoma. So he clearly did not know where the country of Belize was. Yeah. You get funny things. But. That is just beautiful where the wind comes sweeping across the plains. No, it's not Oklahoma. So. <laughs> tell us about the trip to Leon. I know you're going to tell us about sliding down volcanoes, which reading the note you sent me, my mouth dropped open. What the <laughs> heck is that? <laughs> well, you know, uh, like I said, I I'm an adventurous soul. There are things here in Nicaragua that you can do if you're not so adventurous. We have plenty of activities for you too, but this particular day had a group of some friends and colleagues, and we decided we were going to go to Leon for a day trip. And part of that was to go volcano boarding. Now, I didn't really know much about volcano boarding. I had heard about it. I thought, well, you know what? That sounds pretty cool. I don't know what I was thinking. You know, I, sometimes I get a little crazy when people tell me about activities that I sign up for because I, I think I've watched maybe too many movies and I just perceive it to be a different way. So I didn't really ask questions about, you know, how I should dress, you know, any of those kind of things. I just showed up and right. said, okay, let's go volcano boarding. I think in my mind, I thought they were going to just drop us off at the top of this volcano. We were going to slide down it on this, you know, little contraption. And that was that. 
Well, let me tell you how the day started. We, you know, left early Good. in the morning right. from Grand Pacifica. I'll kind of paint the picture for you so others will know what to expect. Uh, but we started off, left in the morning, like I said, about an hour drive to the uh, city of Leon. And we got there. You all met at this place. The group was called, uh, I think they were called like Volcano Day. And super fun group. You loaded up in the back of this, you know, pickup truck and had like this covered canvas over the back end. And so it's kind of you're, you're feeling already like, OK, this is going to be cool. Like I'm about to do something really cool here. So you're bouncing along, you know, outside, I don't know, maybe a 30, I don't, 30, 40 minute drive outside of the city. And, you know, you're seeing cows in the road and you're going and you can see the volcano off in the distance. It's called Cerro Negro, which Cerro. means Black Hill. And it is one of those volcanoes yeah. that's very distinctive because of how it looks. Um, and yeah, so we're driving off and we're all, you know, I was getting a little like just antsy, I think, because I'm, I think I've told you this before. If I don't know what to expect, I get a little nervous. I just like to be prepared. And so we start getting there and you could see it and I'm going, huh, okay, well, that may be a little bigger than I envisioned it was going to be, but I'm like, okay, well, they, they stop at the base of this volcano. And I'm thinking, well, how do, how do we get up to the top? And then they start talking about hiking. And I'm thinking, well, nobody said I was hiking to the top of this volcano. Now, I did have running shoes on, which was great, but I would have preferred right. to have had hiking boots on. So that would be my first tip if you're going to go, you know, go ahead and throw your hiking boots on. Uh, take plenty of water. Yeah. I didn't come prepared. I didn't have water. I did have sunglasses. I had my cute designer sunglasses. I didn't have functional anything. I didn't have a hat. I didn't have much of anything that would have been useful if I had known I would have been hiking that day. Again, I just missed that part of the memo, I guess. But we made our way. It was a beautiful hike. Now, how, high, how high is this uh, black hill? Uh, it's I forget in feet because they do everything in meters here. It's like 720 something meters elevation. Wow. So that's so, pretty high. I mean, it, yeah, I mean, it's a volcano. Yeah, that's high. <laughs> yeah. and, and beautiful. Like you're, you're winding up and doing these switchbacks and you're getting up and you're seeing just, you know, some greenery, but then you're seeing just real barren crater like things, you know. So it, it's pretty cool. And you have a little places that you stop along the way and, you know, everybody's kind of drink their water they brought and had some people had snacks. So they were kind enough to share with me since I did not plan properly. Um, but, you know, beautiful pictures, amazing scenery. You get to the top of this thing. And when I got to the top, I was kind of going, hmm, you're trying to watch and see because there's other groups that are going up, you know, different companies that do the tours. And so I'm kind of watching because you were up to the point you could see where people are going off this volcano. And literally you've got this like handmade like piece of wood, this yellow board. They painted it bright yellow. And, you know, it's it's not very wide. You know, if you've got kind of a, a larger rear end, you, you, you're going to be hanging off this little board a bit, you know. And you've got this little like rope at the front that right. you can picture you you sit on this board and you pull the rope up because it pulls the front of the board up they tell you the technique to that way all the law or the what do you call it, like the lava rocks lava are, rock yeah are like not coming onto the board you know because you're kind of lifting the board up is the technique they tell you so it's kind of like a makeshift toboggan it sounds and, like yeah, that's primitive exactly, very that's, primitive it's yeah. very primitive. Okay. Right. That's the right word for it. Yeah. So uh -huh. imagine, yeah, imagine these crazy looking bright yellow jumpsuits. They give you one of those and they tell you to put it on because you're trying to cover everything to keep the lava rocks and all off of you. Um, I had like a, I love Wonder Woman. We've talked about that. So I had my Wonder Woman little uh, cover, you know, my face. You've got these yes. goggles on. I mean, it's not a pretty look. You know, I keep signing up for these activities like the bees we talked about last time. And now this one, <laughs> I'm like making some kind of a statement here, but it's not a fashion statement. Let me tell you. <laughs> so here we go. We're all in this crazy outfit and they start saying they're pointing to an area because it looked really steep where we were. And I was like, well, this isn't where we like go off, is it? They're like, no, I, I kept thinking we're going to round the bend. It's going to be a little more mild. And they're like, no, like right over there, they're pointing. That's where we're going to 
you know, go down. And they, they did have these little, uh, little pathways, trails that they had kind of carved out, if that makes sense. And so we go over and there's, I don't know, maybe about, I don't know, probably eight or 10 in our group. And they're deciding who's going to go first. And I'm thinking, yeah, I don't want to go me. It wasn't going to be me no. at all. Now, we'll tell you, they told you different techniques you could use to either go faster or go slower. And normally I do, I'm very competitive. And normally I would want to try to go fast and see if I could get. This time, but. You know, I did turn for better speed for this activity. Um, so I let one or two people go ahead of me. And then I was like, I'm ready. I'll go next. So I sit down. I was a little anxious, but I, you know, you're trying to like get the feel of it. And when I first started going, I felt like I was out of control. Like I felt like I was all over the place. And so the guy stopped me real fast and he goes, no, you got to get your technique right. You've got to really dig your heels in or point your toes. I think it was the, if you pointed your toes, you would go faster. And if you dug your heels in, you would go slower, but even. Well, the problem was, and I'm going to give you all my tip. Here's my technique that I learned because I was kind of, my feet were not level. So it was making me kind of almost flip and people did flip and fall off. I didn't now, want to are flip. Your feet on, are your feet on the board? Are your feet no. on the board? No, no. they're on a lava rock. Yeah. I know it's crazy. Here was my technique. Okay. I, I may have invented this. I don't know. I found for me to stay going, like to stay going level where I didn't feel like I was going to flip. I would dig my elbows into my knees and that would make my feet like stay level. And then I just cruised right down. I mean, you're down this volcano in probably less than a minute. It, it does not take long to get down the side of a volcano. So it was fast. You were it's moving fast. fast. You're moving along. Yeah. Now, are there are there trees or anything or what no, is it? It's no. this, the Black Hill, literally, Cerro Negro. I mean, just a black volcano. And is I, I volcano, made her, is volcano dust or lava? What are you sliding on? It's like the lava rock, but it's very fine. I mean, and once you take the jumpsuit off, even though you're covered, tried to cover everything, you are finding that fine dust like every everywhere, literally. It's it's interesting. But I may not have mentioned, you know me, I like to kind of do some research. Yes. So I did find out about Cerro Negro because I didn't know all this interesting things before I went. It is one of the most, I, I didn't tell you this, it's one of the most active volcanoes in Nicaragua. Really? It yeah. still is active. It is still considered an active volcano. So it really, it was one of the youngest. Its birth was in 1850. And it's er erupted approximately 23 times since it was born. I guess that's how they call it. Um, the last eruption was in 1999. Wow. Yeah. Well, now, so let me ask you a question. Off, yeah, At the ahead. top of it, does it look like the pictures of a volcano? at the top or does it just look like a mountain yeah so at the top where we were now i you know it had all these craters around it when you're on like the area that we went down it looks just like kind of this black hill black hill the name of it that's exactly what it looked like now when you glance down in other areas there were craters and real desert looking so it, it was interesting. Like I said, I've been to a few uh, volcanoes here now. There's a yeah. Messiah volcano that I've been to the top of it. And that one, you can drive up to the top. And when you look down to it, it it's more what you would think of a volcano. You can see yeah. the smoke and at night you can see the lava. Um, and then I've seen another one from a distance that looks, they all kind of look a little bit different. They do. Yes. There were no, there was no smoke coming out of your volcano. I didn't point. see any smoke coming out of this. No one. smoke coming out. <laughs> <laughs> but it was a very fast trip down. It was a fast trip down. Yes. It, and you weren't afraid if you fall off, you were going to break your neck or something. Well, I, you know, I try not to think about that. I'm really one of these people. I try to see the good in things. And I just saw it as a new experience and why not try something new? Everyone knows me knows I love to try new things. Um, so I just thought, why not do it? I, I got to be honest with you. Whenever I hear something like that, 
all I can think of is Sonny Bono. Come, remember flying down the side and running into a damn tree. That's why I asked you about the tree. But you had no it's danger. Perfect. There are no trees. No trees. No obstacles in your way. No. Just straight down to the bottom you go. And you literally just kind of come to a stop. You stand up, get off your board, and get out of the way for the next person. Fascinating. Yeah. So it's kind of like volcanic sled riding in a way. Right. <laughs> right. Right? Yeah, some people hear volcano boarding, and I think they're hoping they get to stand up and, like, surf down it. I'm like, I think they tried that at once. I think it was a little too dangerous, so now everyone sits. Sits. Mm -hmm. Pretty fascinating. Yeah. Pretty fascinating. Right? You say it was about a half an hour, 40 minutes outside of the town outside, of Leon. Yes, outside of Leon. Where and I think the group... Uh, the tour group we use, they do multi-day hiking trips. They hike different volcanoes. They have a lot of different activities they do. But this is the one we chose to do. So there are real there, there are real volcano aficionados in Nicaragua, I would think. Absolutely. It's called the land of the lakes and, and volcanoes. I mean, that's one of the things Nicaragua is known for. It's fantastic. Mm -hmm. It is fantastic. And the climb was the climb up a little arduous. Did it do that? You said it did that winding thing, right? Yeah, we did kind of what you call the switchbacks. And um, I will say, I mean, I've not been hiking for a long time in my life, but I did attempt to climb Kilimanjaro years ago. Um, that was that was quite an adventure. But um, so I, I have some experience now in hiking. And this one, I will say, since I haven't done any hiking in quite a while, I mean. It was a little challenging at times. This, you know, it was not a big deal. I mean, it's just walking, um, no like climbing or anything like that. But it was just that you're in the direct sun. And again, I didn't really plan. I didn't have a hat or, you know, anything like that. I probably would have dressed a little differently if I had really <laughs> known what it was going to be like. I remember years ago, when I first got out of college, I think it was the first summer after graduation, I decided with my roommate that we would hike up to the saddle to the saddle at the Grand Tetons, okay, in where, at Wyoming, right? Right. I, I think it's Wyoming. Jackson, Jackson Hole. By. So I swear to God, it was like that winding thing, like you said, but that is very tiresome. I mean, it's just, I remember at one point, everybody would walk by us on the way back down would say, well, it's worth it when you get to the top. I told him, if one more person says that to me, I'm going to punch him in the damn mouth. Because <laughs> oh, no. it was just, it is hiking up a mountainside even when it does that serpentine thing mm -hmm. it's very tiresome yeah so you didn't have to pull your sled and go back up again no oh and i will tell you i i kind of cheated not really cheated you could opt you could pay them to carry your sled to the top for you so i did <laughs> opt for, for that version you know hey <laughs> i didn't want to get too smart. tired so I paid someone to carry my sled to the top. I'm know. okay admitting that and saying that. Very, very smart, Mary. In the time we have left, how about the city of Leon itself? How, how oh big is it? What's it like? Et cetera. Yeah, so Leon is the second largest city in Nicaragua. I think now it's over 200,000 in population. And for me, like it's, again, one of those cool cities to go explore, lots of great restaurants. I like to go to where like the central park, the little main square is. There's a restaurant right off of the square and I forget the name of it, but you, you can't miss it because it's right if you're looking towards the beautiful white cathedral. So in a lot of, you know, pictures and things, you've probably seen this cathedral and never really, you know, known a lot about it. But um it is striking and you can go inside and do an in-depth tour. It was in Spanish, so it was a little challenging for me. But my favorite part of it was you got to go to the rooftop of this cathedral. And the cathedral is called the Spanish name. I'm not going to mess it up. I'm not going to try it and mess it up. So I'll just say in English what it's called. It's called the Cathedral of the Assumption of Mary. Yeah, and right. it is one of those historic landmarks a lot of poets and you know famous people are buried there um it is it started construction like in 1747 so it's really wow. really old but it's actually i always kept getting it confused the oldest cathedrals in granada but this is actually the largest cathedral in central america 
and you go to the rooftop and the views are, I mean, just stunning. You can see all around, you can see many, many volcanoes, all like just 360, um, all the different cathedrals in the city of Leon, which right. there are a lot, there's beautiful ones. You know, it's a great place. I say, if you are if you love photography, whether you're an amateur like myself or a professional, it is definitely a place that you will get some amazing photos at the top of that roof. Top it's cathedral. fantastic. And the restaurants and food were great. Yes, absolutely. We tried a lot of just local foods and, you know, all sorts of cool things. Um, so, yeah, we spent some time there. We went to a bakery. And then to finish off the trip home, because the day trip, you've got to finish it off right. Um, coming back, we stopped at a place called, I think it was like Nag Nagarote or something like that. But it was a little uh, town that's known for their casillos. And I don't know. Do you know, what, do you know what a casillo is? I do, I do not. <laughs> You've never heard of a casillo. Okay. I have to ask my I'm gonna, wife. I'm going to tell you what is in it. The Good. basic basic ingredients is Nicaraguan cheese, a tortilla, onion, and vinegar. And it's literally made and it's put in this plastic bag. And so you see them on the side of the road a lot of times, um, anywhere like gas stations, things. You'll see these this food in a plastic bag. And uh, the place we stopped was known to be the, the best one, supposedly, in Nicaragua. And you you tear off the end of the bag and you kind of just push and you eat it out of this plastic bag. It was really hard for me the way I was brought up. I'm like, I don't know about eating this thing out of a plastic bag, but I did it. It was interesting. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yes, that would not be my bag either, so to speak. But, but. <laughs> How, how was it good? Did it taste it, good? It was. It was actually really good. It was It was really different because I'd never had anything like it. And I was really having a hard time getting out of the <laughs> sucking, eating this thing out of a plastic bag. I thought my mom would not approve of this. You know, <laughs> I read Miss Manor's book too many times. But hey, when in Nicaragua, you eat a casino out of a plastic bag. There was a Nicaraguan well. Well, once again, this has been fantastic. We love it. Leslie at large is just one of the high points of my week. I'm telling you, because I get to live vicariously with all the fun that you have, but none of the danger. And I like that. I like that. Well, I'll keep trying to take you all around Nicaragua and we'll have a great time together. How's that? That's fantastic. And we will see you again next week. And thank you once again. This is awesome. great. Absolutely great folks. I was going to say I hope, but I know you enjoyed that as much as I did. It is, it's always a treat. It's it's always a treat, isn't it, to, to go with Leslie at large? And so, uh, get your your skateboard or your volcano board, whatever, and get ready. Head on over there and enjoy yourself at Cerro Negro, uh, Black Mountain, and uh, we'll see you next week. As I always tell you, let's do this thing. <laughs>